Okay, I featured this uh, IDGAF today. Okay, I know this song perhaps can describe your attitude to our large number of uh, examples and after-class exercises. Okay, but here comes exam number two. So you have to care about what I have given to you by including the examples and after-class exercises. Since I have stated that the exam two, all problems will be from this scope. It will be from our theories, our um, examples, and after-class exercises. It will not be hard uh, upon you review my content, my, uh, my, my materials. Um, I have uploaded the review materials for chapter four and chapter five. Okay, and as I said, those are the minimum content you have to review or to pursue a, 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 a acceptable uh, grades. Okay, if you are if you are planning to get a higher than eighty, uh, you need to review more. Okay, but please uh, spend some time on at least the materials I shared in the folder of exam number two. Okay, those uh, review slides for these two chapters. Okay, so today we will talk about combined loading. Basically, we will calculate stresses in eccentrically uh, loaded elements. Okay, so in this section, we will de deal with kind of combined loading. This is a combination of uh, bending moment and uh, axle loading. Okay, the eccentric loading just means that the force is added not to the centroid of a column or a beam, but with a small distance from the centroid. Okay, if it's added to the centroid only, uh, you will have just is is just a uh, axle loading. Okay, you will have only normal stress. But if you add the force here, uh, because this distance, this arm will make a bending moment. Okay, so your column or your beam will be subjected to uh, two effects. That is the actual load, axle loading and a bending moment. Okay, basically for the part of uh, F, uh, our stress can be calculated as F over A. Okay, for the bending moment, our stress can be calculated from M Y over I. Right, then the overall stress, the combined loading, the overall stress, will be this stress A plus stress B. Okay, so this is the basic theory. Okay, before that, um, let's give a brief review. Let's talk about what will be covered in exam number two. Okay, uh, since I mentioned um, after the first exam, that exam two will be likely uh, sim simpler or easier than exam one, because here we will have uh, specific e equations. I, uh, you will explicitly know what equations will be used. Okay, exam two will only cover two chapters: the torsion and bending. Right. So for the torsion part, what are we talking about? We talked about the stress induced by torsion. Right? That is only shear stress. Right? That is calculated from Tc over J. Or this is the maximum. Right? The maximum. So the regular tau just equals uh, T over rho, T, T times rho over J. Right? So that is a random point. Then the deformation will be an angle of a twist, and it can be calculated from TL over GJ. Okay. Uh, of course, this equation is available on the formula sheet. If not, we uh, talked about an analogy that can help you understand and remember this equation. That is delta equals FL over EA. Right? So they are similar, they are the same in terms of structure of the equation. Then we also uh, talked about what the um, transmission system, the gear transmission systems, and we have five rules. 
and I introduced a uh, the golden rule, right, the golden rule to help you understand and remember the uh, number two and the number three of the five rules. Okay, how to deal with two gears connected directly to each other using a gear ratio. Okay, this the larger gear always have larger torque, and the smaller gear always have larger uh, angular velocity and a larger angle of twist. Okay. Then the um, indeterminate indeterminate shafts. Right. This uh, have only two possibilities here. Right. We will not have the proportional uh, things. So, so we have only case one is a phi one equals phi two. Case two is a phi one plus phi two equals zero. Okay. No proportional case, no gaps. Okay. This is easier than the indeterminate actually loaded elements. Okay. Those are all about torsion, right? And for the bending, the bending you need to know first of all how to draw the V and the M diagram, right? To determine to determine the maximum bending moment right, in a loaded uh, beam. Okay. Then the second part you have to know how to calculate Y bar. Right, that is sum a i y i over sum a i and you need to know how to calculate i for a composite um, section that is just sum of i c i plus a i d i square right the tables right you need to understand and remember how to use the two tables to calculate these two parameters then uh, regarding the bending stress, right, the bending stress is a normal stress. It can be calculated from my over i. Right, the maximum at a point would be mc over i. And for the um, composite section, for the co uh, composite beam, are composed of uh, two different materials, and we talked about the section transformation. Uh, you transform transform section using n equals e two over e one. This is the base material, right? Um, so here is uh, use it to transform section, and then transform back when you calculate stress. Right? So today this will be our Okay, this will be here to here. This will be covered in exam number in exam number two. Okay, and today this topic will not be covered. And this will be the combined loading, right? Combined loading. Just uh, the overall stress equals F over A plus or minus. Um, C over I. Okay. Okay. So in the last section of chapter five, we'll talk about the combined loading. Uh, it's just combination of moment, bending moment, axial force. Okay, as shown here, so when a load is applied perpendicular to the cross section on the centroid. Uh, so what stress will, will it generate? So obviously that is just uh, a problem in chapter one. So when you have a load applied uh, perpendicular to the cross section, of course it will only generate a normal stress. Right? So what if the load is not applied to the centroid? So as shown here, as shown here, the load is added here. Okay, it is actually equivalent to 
combination of a axle load plus a bending moment. This is called eccentric loading. Okay, it's equivalent to a load here plus a bending moment, and the bending moment equals this loading times the arm here. Right. So this has been fully demonstrated here in the second figure. It's equivalent to. Uh, okay, it's equivalent to here. Right. It's, uh, you move the P to the centroid, and then add a bending moment equals P times E. And the E here is the distance of the load from the centroid of the section. Then we can calculate the stress. So the sigma A is just a normal stress caused by the axial force. It equals F over A, and the F equals this P. Right? And the normal stress caused by bending moment can be calculated from MC over I, and the M equals the loading times the E, the distance of the loading uh, from the centroid of the cross section. And then you add them together, and then that will be the total normal stress. Okay, in this figure here, we illustrated the uh, um, the distribution of the normal stress. Uh, due to this loading, this uh, uh, axle loading, you can see that we get a constant uh, normal stress. It's a constant normal stress. Right, due to this bending moment, you will have neutral axis, and on one side of it, you have compressive stress, and on the other side, you have uh, tensile stress, and their values are proportional to the distance from the uh, neutral axis, and it reaches the maximum value at the edges, at the edge. Right. Then when you combine them together, as shown here, okay, the normal, the zero stress will not be at the neutral axis anymore, so it will be moving towards one side, right? So if your uh, if your axle loading is in compression, you can see that the compression side will be enlarged and the tensile stress will be reduced. Okay, you get a, such a distribution. Then what if the E is very small? So what if the E is very small, meaning that the bending moment is very small? Okay, in that case, uh, so here you will have kind of a relatively large constant um, normal stress distribution. Right, then here on the, uh, the stress induced by the um, bending moment will be very small. So as a result, the combination, the combined loading, uh, the combine after after you count the both effect, the overall stress distribution will be will be something like this. Right. Okay. So this is just f in the case of uh, E. Is very small. And here, just for E, is is large. Okay, those are the theory. Then let's go s go through several examples, okay, to see how to use this theory, how to combine the two equations to solve the stress in 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 a structural member subjected to combined loading.